Now, to Tyler Perry's credit, Tyler Perry called us up, right? And he said, I can see the pain in you and I can hear it. And I want to let you know that I, I, I would never do nothing to hurt you. But the conversation kept going on. Only for Tyler Perry to admit he did start a rumor that I was difficult to work with. He lied. Only for Tyler Perry to admit I was wrong. And when my movie Boo come out, I'm going to say that. Right? Now, here's where, when you did that interview with Kat, I could respect how you do it. Because Kat said, you let them people lie in your face. And your response was, Kat, I don't know if they're lying or not. Right. Because I can only take them at their word. At their word. Right? Yes. Well, we sent you the audio mm -hmm. of Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to take me at my word. I want you to hear his word. And what did you hear that man saying? What did you hear that man saying? He said it. What did he say? Is that, is, <laughs> Mooney, you know you're not supposed to be <laughs> recording people. N no, 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 no. Let me back up. Okay. Everything we did was legal. And here's where a black woman really gets the kick in the ass. Had I not recorded Tyler Perry, then it would have been my word, word against, his. against his. And then on top of that, it would have been, he's so powerful, we can't even pay no attention to that. Right. Well, now I have him on audio, which is legal to do mm -hmm. where we live. Right. Enjoy. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have him on audio. And do you know what some people then said? Why would you record him? <laughs> Just like you sat there and said, you know what's unlegal to... But did you hear what the man said? I, I violated you. Yeah. I mistreated you. Yeah. Do you know, Shannon, that's cost my family tens of millions of dollars? Yeah. Over a lie and a rumor? Is he gonna, is he gonna make a, he's gonna compensate you for that? I want you to look in your camera. Yes. And I want you to talk to Tyler Perry because you heard what that man said. Mm -hmm. So ask him, will he compensate my family for that? Tyler, will you come on Club Shay Shay and let's have a conversation about the fair compensation for what transpired between you and Monique? You can sit right here and she's sitting right here and you and I can have a conversation. And we'll do you one better. And give me five on that, baby. We'll do you one better, Shay. My husband and I will sit right next to him. See, with this whole situation and some of the people that Kat talked about, ironically, I have this issues with those same people. There were people that reached out to Tyler Perry on my behalf. Okay. And I was grateful for that. Okay. There was Al Sharpton, the Reverend Al Sharpton, civil rights leader. Yeah. I sent him that audio. He listened to it. He said, baby, what that man did to you was wrong and you're like my daughter. And we're going to have to get him to fix that. Right. We didn't hear from Al Sharpton for six months. The next time we saw Al Sharpton, he was on a podium talking about we don't need to fly commercial because we can fly Tyler Perry's private jet. I said, that's why maybe I'm not hearing back from him. OK, then we had our beautiful sister, Stephanie Mills. Yes. OK, who is she don't play. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. I told her what happened, sent her the audio. Now, I don't know if she listened to that audio or not, but however, she called Tyler Perry. She said, Monique, Tyler Perry does not want to revisit this. Okay, fine. Right. While we're on the phone, Tyler Perry calls her back and says, I will meet with Monique, but not with her husband. Now, you ready for this? Yeah. And then Monique has to apologize publicly to say, Oprah and I had nothing to do with messing up her career. But that'd be a lie. I look in the goddamn camera. <laughs> I thought you, I thought that was a stage the way you... Look in the camera. Yes. Because you heard it. Yes. Right? Yes. So when you have, when you hear what this man is saying. So I said, Stephanie, tell Tyler Perry, never will I meet with him without my husband. And I owe no apology, so I'm not going to give one. That goes away. Kevin Hart. Now, you know when Cat Williams said gatekeepers? Yes. Yeah. Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. I do his um, podcast. Yes. And I want y'all to re-listen to the podcast so you can hear it for yourself. When he first comes on, he says, you're like my mother, you're like my aunt, you're like my sister. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then we do the podcast. We speak about the Tyler Perry situation. Oprah Winfrey, he said, I don't really know Oprah, but I'm going to reach out to Tyler. 
appreciate that. Kevin kept his word. He reached out to Tyler Perry. Kevin Hart called me back about maybe a week or so later. He said, Mo, I talked to Tyler. He said he don't want to revisit it. He said, but I tell you what, let's move past that, Mo. Let's just move past that and let's just do great things. So whatever That's you, what Kevin said. I want you to hear me, Kevin Hart. Let's move past that, Mo. Let's do some great things together. Don't even worry about it. Whatever y'all want to do, I will partner with you. I'll executive produce with you. You just let me know what you want to do. Now, let me say that before we go any further, because okay. I want to make sure I give Kevin Hart his proper credit. When my family was up against the wall, Kevin Hart wrote us a check and said, here you go. We're forever grateful for that. When we were able to give it back, we said, brother, we appreciate you with some interest on top because I don't ever want nobody to think like me and my book. husband. Yeah, yeah. So I want to make sure I put that out there. That was, that brother really helped us out when we needed to be helped out. Then when he came back with, I got you. I didn't ask Kevin Hart to do anything. He said, I'll executive produce. I'll partner with you. I said, good shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with Endemol and we're trying to get our talk show back. Mo, whatever it is, I got you. Now, Kevin Hart is one of the biggest entertainers right now in the world Correct. right? and was then we got off the phone with kevin hart we called in the mall immediately and said kevin hart said whatever we want to do he got us he's gonna partner executive use they was like oh this is incredible because when you put kevin hart name on it you already know what it is correct two weeks go by we get a call from in the mall in the mall says we just got a call from kevin hart's manager dave becky and dave becky said kevin doesn't want anything to do with monique so whatever she told y'all, he doesn't want to do anything with her, nothing. You know, he doesn't want any any kind of relationship with Monique. So what changed between the two weeks and when, and, and plus he gave your check, you gave the money back, then said he would partner with you, executive produce, whatever you need, Mo, hey, we got you. So what transpired or what do you think transpired between then, that two that two week period? Well, soon as we got off the phone and they told us what Kevin manager David Becky said, I called Kevin Hart immediately. I said, hey, baby, we just got off the phone with Endemol, and they said Dave Becky called them up and said, you don't want anything to do with me. He said, Mo, that's, that's a miscommunication. I can tell you right now. I said, wait a minute. Are you okay, though, with this white man calling them up? Getting in between our relationship at something you said, he said, Mo, I'm, that's a miscommunication, and we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. I've never talked back to Kevin Hart again. So that's what we're faced with. When you allow somebody to come in between a relationship with a woman that you said, I'm like your mother. You said, I'm like these things. I didn't ask you for that. So everything that that baby was saying, sitting here, everything he was saying was on the up and up. Because when you hear people say, get the anger out your heart. Oh, man, no one's saying he's lying. No one ever said I was lying. It's so easy to discount and devalue because of what we look like. Right. However, when it comes to Tyler Perry, I will not allow you to discount or devalue because that is your voice on that audio. Mm -hmm. Remember on Good Times mm -hmm. when Penny's mother was whooping up on yeah. her and then and she had recorded it. Mm -hmm. That's you on tape. So how does it go from you saying you're going to give me an apology to now I owe you an apology? But what do you owe an apology for? What 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 could I possibly owe you an apology for when you've admitted? See, when Lee Daniels says to me, because Cookie from the, the show Empire, yeah. I was offered that role. Now, Taraji tore it up, baby. Right. It Listen right. here. However, I was offered that. Then Felita called me back and say, baby girl, they said you're too difficult to work with. But you hear on the audio that a man told David Talbert I was difficult to work with. Do you see how that right. cost my family? Yes. And with no accountability because, oh, it's the great Tyler Perry. No, you've got to be accountable for that. Oprah Winfrey, you've got to be accountable for the things you've done with my family. You've got to be accountable for that. Is there any relationship between you and Tyler and you and Oprah currently? No, no. But I thought there was an apology. I, I read what there uh, that I thought I read somewhere that Oprah had issued you an apology and Tyler had issued an apology. That's not correct. No, no. The only person that's given you an apology. You saw it. It's Lee Daniels. That's the only person. So we are in a 
place where we're too afraid to call them for what it is. We're too afraid to say, if it looked like a duck and it quacked like a duck, what is it, Shannon? It's a duck. Right. So, again, you see the struggle of the black woman as I'm sitting here talking to you. And you say, Mo, but why would you record him? But you heard the man violate me. The first thing wasn't, I can't believe that cat did that to you. It's, why would you do it? And we understand it. Right. Because we've been conditioned that way. Because when you're... You had to get somehow because when you're telling people these are lies, yes. nobody is believing Monique. So now, even though you have him record his voice and that's him and he's saying he made it up now is no longer. Oh, man, I can't believe he lied on Mo. Mo, why'd you record it? So now they put the onus back on you. Where's the win? How do we win? How does a black woman win when you say, here he is right here? And I look to the community and say, how long do we allow us to keep being exploited, used up, taken advantage of? And because we think somebody can give us an opportunity, mm -hmm. we just say, shh, I'm not going to say nothing. If we keep operating like that, Shannon, you're going to have a whole lot of us sitting right here in the same seat, almost telling the same story. Why do you think Tyler is afraid to meet with you and your husband? Why does it need to be you one on one when he meet with other representatives and 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 the cl their client? Why, what is it about you that he feels it needs to be just you and he? Does he think your husband is some kind of negative influence on you? He thinks the husband is saying things that that Monique probably wouldn't say if I just had had an opportunity to talk to her one on one. What do you think that is? Let me say <coughs> this. Excuse me. People better be glad my husband is by my side because there are people in Hollywood that know wherever you act up is where I show up. People know in Hollywood, <laughs> baby, Shannon, and I don't say it with a badge of honor. It's just what it is. Well, I've had to say, who you think you're talking to? And we're sitting there with the president of the studio or the com My patience level is not going to allow. I've been molested. I've been violated. So the moment I see you trying to do it, we're going to have to address it. My husband is nothing but a gentleman. And you know why people have a problem with my husband? Because he's right to it. There's no we're going to dance around the bush. He's right to it. Right. And people like Tyler Perry, people like Oprah Winfrey, they look at my husband and say, how dare you be so direct? Right. How dare you not put your eyes down when you're talking to me? How dare you do that? My husband is also my manager. Why would he want to exclude my right. management? It's like, Tyler, you should want my husband to be there. You, right. you, you may want him to be sitting right there so that way we can have a conversation that everyone can be heard. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate you, Shannon, because most people are too afraid. That's heard the tape. They're too afraid to say, no, I heard it, and this is what he said. Mm -hmm. I appreciate T.S. Madison. Because T.S. Madison was the first one to say, no, I heard what he said. Mm -hmm. So when folks were trying to jump on her, she not down for the black woman. Listen, baby, y'all don't even understand the right. fights that sister be having when ain't nobody watching for the black woman. Right. So I appreciate you looking in that camera. Right. Well, I mean, look, sometimes there are some some black people, some, not all, some, that... My grandfather used to say, Mo, is that if you're not careful, you'll become the very thing you despise the most in a person. Now, what do we despise most about Trump supporters, ex-President Trump, is that no matter what he says, no matter what he does, they give him an out. There's some people in our community, no matter what powerful black people say or do in our community, we'll give them an out. And we can't. And we become the very thing we despise the yes. most. What we despise most about President Trump's ex-President Trump supporters is that no matter what he does or says, it's OK. Yes, we can't do that. We you can't. can't. We can't. If somebody's wrong, like you said, Mo, if somebody's wrong, we have to be man or woman enough to say they're wrong, regardless of what comes along with that. They don't know. They don't understand what them saying. I'm sorry will mean for them. See, when I, I read the Because that's day, not for you. And I'm sorry, it's not for the person that you offended. It's for you. Because currently you're in hostage. Your feelings. Because you have to live with that. 
You got to live with that. What you've done. So when you see a woman say, "Me turning seventy, I'm so happy because I've never hurt anyone." Stop it. Stop it. Because there's a black woman that has been calling your name for over a decade that you seem to want to make go away. And I know I'm not the only one. Would you want? Would you sit if Oprah called Mo today? Would you sit down and have a conversation with her? Let me tell you what I'll do if Oprah called me today, Shannon Sharp. We will sit down and have a conversation with Oprah Winfrey. We will sit down and have a conversation with Tyler Perry. We will sit down and have a conversation with the presidents of Lionsgate. We will sit down and have a conversation with anyone that is. Br- I'm gonna say brave enough to sit down and have a conversation. But what happens is within seconds. Within seconds, if Tyler Perry was to sit right here, you would say, man, I heard you. What you trying to tell me about this system? Within seconds, Oprah Winfrey would know that people would say, hold up. And I'll go back to Tyler Perry. You know why Tyler Perry don't want to talk to my husband? Because he can't talk around him. My husband don't care nothing about that man's money. We don't care nothing about your title. We care about your character, brother. We care about your integrity. And what you going to pay? What, what you, what you going to pay? How you going to make it right? How are you going to make it right? Because if I am your Aunt Mary and I really belong to you, as I really belong to you right now, Shannon, I am your sister. Mm-hmm. And you heard something that was wrong. Yeah. How, how can Tyler Perry make it right, Mo? Give you a job, give you a, uh, uh, your sit, give you a sitcom, say, Mo, okay, you know what, Mo? Sitcom, you're going to be the executive producer. I'm going to be a co-executive producer. You're going to do the sitcom. If somebody cost you, Shannon Sharp, millions of dollars, yes. do you want to be compensated for what they cost you for a lie and a rumor? Yeah. So at that time, I was making roughly between two and three million dollars a year. Right. I sat in that for over 12, for over a decade, like 12 years. Right. You do the math. Over a lie that he admitted that he told. Not something I'm making up. Mm-hmm. You admitted that, brother. How do you make that right? You got, I'm sure you got lawyers. Have you uh, had a conversation? Well, what happens is when you take somebody at their word, time, time, time. We don't need to go to no lawyers, Tyler. You know what you did. Just make it right. right. And if he doesn't make it right, what will our community do? What will our community say? Because today is me, tomorrow is you. Then what? Yeah. We've got to hold him accountable. What did what 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 cat say? We've got to. You got to tell it's Tyler Perry. Perry. Come on now. You <laughs> got to do it, Shannon. You got to tell him. You got to tell it. Mo, well, obviously, when you do when, when you do stand up, you go to a lot of different cities, a lot of different clubs. Yes. It's a lot of different promoters. Has everybody always been on the up and up with Monique, or did you try? Sometimes people try to take advantage. You're female. You're black. You're heavy. You're not going to say that like Mr. From Color Purple. <laughs> You're black. You're ugly. You're not going to do that, shit. But, you know, people try to take... People would would try to take advantage of anyone. But seemingly like us, their team were willing to take more advantage of I've us. had to tell the promoters, call the police. Because either they're going to come get you or me. They're trying to hold up on the money? Call the police. Because, and this was, this was like $75. Can you imagine? $75, like, you know where we come from. Yeah. If somebody gets you for $25, that's a problem. Yeah, for sure. Imagine $25 million. Yeah. We've seen people lose their life for $25. For sure. Imagine somebody getting you for millions. <coughs> How are you supposed to feel? Would you let it go? Nah, hell no. Nah. Right. So when people say, Mo, just let it go. Yeah, but, but, it, but it's easy for people to say, let it go when they haven't lost anything. Come on, baby. It's easy to say. Come on. But when you've lost, how do you, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, hey, someone should just get over it. You should, you can't tell somebody how to grieve, how long to grieve, because you're not the one that's hurting. <laughs> they didn't do it to you. They didn't do it to you. Thank it you. was done. And and I will say this right now on your show. I still love y'all. We still love y'all. You love more than make it, make it right. My husband. Okay, say that again because. You I, love y'all more. Y'all make it right. Yes, indeed. Okay, I'll fix him a pound cake. <laughs> my, my husband would always say, Mama, we ain't calling nobody out. We calling them up. 
And if we continue to call us up on our doings that are not right, we get better as a people. Like we get better. Do you know why things were able to happen like they happened on the color purple? Why you hate? Oh, you talk about the rebate. You talk about what I'm talking about the seventh one. Yeah. The one that just came out. Right. Right. And that the seventh edition. <coughs> It's like the musical with Fantasia and, and, and Taraji, right? Right, okay. right, right, yeah. right, right, right. That, that one with all our beautiful sisters. Yes. You know why they're able to treat us like they treat us? How are you handpicked in your audition? No, if you handpicked, you don't audition. I want you to say that again, Shannon, because people don't understand how deep this goes. When I watch my sister say it was an honor to be handpicked. Right. Then why ever would you audition? Yeah. And the moment, in my opinion, the moment she auditioned, they knew we got them. We can treat them any kind of way we want to treat them. We can do them any kind of way. But why would you want to? Why? Just because you can, that doesn't mean you should. But they did. But they did. How do you handpick me? And then mistreat me. Yes. And then I got to send a letter to you about the mistreatment that you gave me. That's why they're able to get away with it. That's why when I do interviews, oftentimes, or these conversations, people are too afraid to even address it. Because they don't want to be caught up like, oh, I don't I don't know. I, I, I. When you say, wait a minute, no, that's the truth. Right. I heard it. And I don't want my character to be on the line as I'm being a person sitting there asking people about their lives right. and then not be able to stand in what I've heard. Right. That's why it made so much. Of, uh, it was important for us. It was important for us to get you that audio. I don't want you to take my word. Yeah. And anything I've said on this couch right now that don't take my word. Ask those people. Ask those people right. and see what happens. And then maybe after this come out, they, they're going to label me again. She's bitter. She's not loved. Yeah, yeah. You done stole, you done got 30, 40 million of my dollars. Yeah, I'm bitter. She, she, Most, the average person gonna be bitter. Okay, I just want to look in your camera. Okay? And and here's the thing. Because I got a king at home, I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. You just want what's right. We're just determined. Right. Not Life is too good to be bitter. But we're determined for you to take accountability. Right. That's all. I was very young when I had my first son. I didn't want him to have to go to a college because that was all that my parents could afford. I wanted him to be able to do whatever he wanted to do. And then there was a sacrifice in that. Right? Because mm -hmm. when you're trying to go get it, you're missing this right here. Oh, you miss a lot. The nurturing. Yes. You miss yes. all of that. Yes. So, you know, all of that had right. to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. So now with this group, with my second set of children, mm -hmm. I'm a different mother mm -hmm. than I was mm -hmm. then. So my whole thing is even right now, we want to make sure that when we leave here, our babies are good. Right. And their babies are good. And had Tyler Perry not told that lie, we would be on our way to that. And I know people saying, why she keep going back to that? I'm going to keep going back to that shit Shannon Sharp till he takes accountability right. for it. Now we go to the Hoodie Awards. Tyler Perry is there. OK, mm -hmm. Tyler Perry calls me in his room. Now, when I go into Tyler Perry's room, his staff is in there. Now, you ready to holler laughing? Yes. OK, I take my security in there with me because I always want to have somebody with me. Right. Right. Tyler Perry does this. <coughs> and the people scattered. They all left out the room. I said, look at this shit right here. You saw me. And they all scattered. That wasn't the light. That's for the people. You know, light clap, lights on. Lights off, because they got their asses up out of there, okay? Okay, okay, So at the time, my security looked at me. I said, you don't work for Tyler Perry. You could. Touche. So Tyler Perry says to me, listen, Monique, we really need you to, you know, promote this film, because if you get nominated for the Oscar, your next movie is going to be three to five million dollars. If you win it, your next movie is six to eight million dollars. I said, Tyler Perry, who you talking to? I'm a black woman. When they gonna pay that kind of money? No, I'm telling you, that's what it is. And, and, and if you just go and promote it, I said, listen, brother, you can pay me to promote it. Because at the time, now him and Oprah are producers on the film. Right. I said, you can pay me to do it. I don't care where the check come from, but y'all just gotta I, pay I me to do money. it. 
He said, I'm not in the habit of giving out money for free. I said, and I'm not in the habit of working for free. But you gave T.D. Jakes a check for a million dollars. But that's another story, and I'm back. Mm -hmm. So when he then says that, it's like, listen, we both mutually agree. You don't give out free money. I don't work for free. free. We hugged, Shannon. When we were done talking, we hugged. Do you hear me? Yes. We hugged like brother and sister. Like, it's cool. He understand. Right. Okay? Okay. Oprah Winfrey calls my husband. I want y'all to take your time because I'm getting ready going. Yeah, you, that's your camera right Yeah, because the people at home, they sitting there like, Moni, what happened? Bitch, I'm getting ready to tell you. <laughs> she calls my husband. Okay. My husband explains to her what's going on. She says, there have been times I've had to draw the line in the sand. So my husband said, well, what is different between you and Monique? You've got to draw the line in your sand when you know they're asking you for too much. She said, you're absolutely right. And I understand your position. You're right in the position you're taking. So when you're looking at me saying, well, what happened? I'm telling you what happened. But, okay, she's saying that privately, but did she voice that publicly? Did you hear her say it? I did. Did you hear her say it? JT, did you hear her say it? No. Zach, did you hear her say it, Zach? Regina, did you hear her? Tommy, no one seemed to hear that publicly. She said that privately. Now, when she said that, see, everything we're saying to you, it can be proven. She had him on speakerphone. And that when she was talking to him, mm -hmm. in that room was a man named Reggie Wells, who just passed, who used to be Oprah Winfrey's makeup artist, mm -hmm. who he had a conversation with me and my husband. Now, for you babies that's good with the little internet, we had a, a show on called Monique and Sydney Finding a Way to Be Unoffended. Finding a way to be unoffended. Reggie Wells is on that show speaking about Oprah Winfrey. Reggie Wells said, Monique, I was there that day. He said, and when y'all got off the phone, he look, I looked at her and said, why don't you just pay this woman the money? She deserves it. And she looked at him and said, I won't be paying her nothing. And he said, that's not right. And you know it's not right. Now, that man shared that on that show. So I'm not saying nothing that hasn't been shared. So you have people that will say things in private, but won't do it publicly. I'm the person that I will say it in private and I'm going to say it publicly because that's the only way we make it right. But you don't need somebody to talk good to your face. You need somebody to talk good behind your back. So if you telling me, if you telling me what a great person I am in my face, but you telling me I'm dog poop behind my back, what good is that, Mo? What does that make those kind of people, Shannon? That's... What does it make those that's kind of cowardly. people? That's cowardly. That is cowardly. See, here's what's this. When we have our juggernauts, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Steve Harvey, the, Kevin Hart, these are our juggernauts of our community. These are the people that our babies say, when I grow up, I want to be that. Yes. I want to be like that. So we have to call those people to the mat and say, listen... What are you teaching our babies? You're feeding poison because you're showing them your private jet. I'm going to show you my mansion. I'm going to show you my fancy cars. But my character is shot and I'm bankrupt. I got a lot of money in my bank. It's more zeros than some of them can, than we can imagine. But their character, they are bankrupt. Those are bankrupt people. So everybody that Kat sat right here and told you about, I can't wait to see your next interviews with those people. They ain't coming on now, Mo. Invite them. I have. They not going to do it? Well, look, I've already done Steve. I have a relationship with Steve. He, do him he, again. Do him again. And I'm going to say this. I'm trying to get Oprah and, uh, and Tyler, though. Baby, we got him. Y'all, come on. Stop playing. They ain't coming on, Mo. Thanks to you. You know how. And I don't want to put you on a spot, but I'm going to say it because <coughs> I appreciate you as a black man and what you're doing. Thank you. If you are my friend mm -hmm. and someone says to me, Monique Shannon Sharp wronged me. And you my friend? Yeah. You, I'm going to call my friend. You can come to me. And I'm going to say, hey, is what they saying true? And if you get to him and Han, I'm going to tell you, till you fix it, you and I can't talk. Because if you'll do them that way, you do that. it'll be a matter of time before you do it to me. So if Steve Harvey is your friend, mm -hmm. you call your friend up and you ask him, is what our sister saying right, man? Because if it is, we can't do that to her. 
if that's our sister. See, it took a transgender named T.S. Madison. It was a guy named Jamaica Carter. We, Jamaica Carter and our mutual friend. Jamaica Carter and our friends. Mm -hmm. T.S. Madison was a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. So Jamaica called me and said, would you mind doing T.S. Madison's show? I go do T.S. Madison's show. When I tell T.S. Madison when the camera cuts, I said, listen, your friend is wrong. She said, Monique Lee Daniels is my friend. I said, then you need to call your friend and tell him to fix this shit. She said, I will. Within a couple of days, who did I get a call from? Lee, Lee Daniels. See, that's a friend. Mm -hmm. That's a true